Good morning all. Well now yesterday I got these little NeoPixel LEDs, little addressable RGB LEDs with a built-in driver chip inside. And I was just thinking overnight, how could I test these things out just to see, well mainly how bright they are. So I wondered whether if I just solder some header pins on one like that and then just stick five volts onto it and take it off and glitch it a bit, whether it might sort of just light up. Let's give it a try. So I've plugged the LED into a breadboard and here's a battery box with four AA nickel metal hydrides, which is about five volts. Let's see what happens. We can get it to briefly flash and it seems mainly the green and blue LEDs that flash on, but it does seem quite reliable if the chip, if you can call it booting, the chip boots and once power is established on the LED it's well and truly off. But um, I was just wondering how you could get this thing to turn on without going to all the hassle of wiring up a microcontroller and loading in the special driver software. And I came up with an idea. So just going back to the datasheet for a moment, the difficulty is this thing here to send a zero, the waveform has to go high for a short period and low for a long period. To send a one, high for a long period, low for a short period. And then you need to send a reset, which is a low for at least 50 microseconds. If we look at the table, here are all the numbers here. And they're quite precise, 0.4 microseconds, plus or minus 150 nanoseconds. Is it really necessary to be this precise? And then you got this rather intimidating looking graph with uh, first 24 bits, second 24 bits, the reset code 50 microseconds. I'm tempted to just shove a square wave at this thing. Well, okay, not quite a square wave, but that waveform there where it says one code, slightly longer high period than low period. But nevertheless, it's just a very simple waveform. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a simple 555 timer here. Uh, I've got pin 6 back to pin 2, so it runs as an A-stable multivibrator. Uh, I've got a pot there, I think it's 1K, going across pins 8, 7 and 6, and a switch on pin 4, which is reset. Now notice I've got no capacitor between pins 1 and 2, and that's because 555s don't oscillate very fast. So I want this thing to go flat out. So the few picofarads of uh, capacitance between pins one and two is gonna be good enough. And then I'm just gonna waggle this pot round to see if I can catch that precise point where the waveform is just right. Then I'm gonna press this switch to give it that 50 microseconds. In fact, I'm gonna give it several seconds of uh, zero. So let's switch on the power. Uh, the pot's in its mid position. So it should be pouring a stream of, uh, well, uh, virtually a square wave to this LED. And then we hit reset. Goodness me, it works. In fact, this thing seems to have huge tolerance of different frequencies. I can turn this pot. It's all different positions. And it pretty much works quite reliably. In fact, there are some positions where I can, if I can just hit it right, get it to change color. Look at that, purple, beautiful. I get some other colors. Now it seems to be quite keen on doing purple. But basically it just works. If I turn it off, back on again, I can set the pot pretty much where I want, press the button and it lights up. This thing doesn't require high tolerances at all. Look, I've managed to get it to go green. Press reset and it's back to white again. Now, although I'm not claiming that this is any form of complex controller for these NeoPixels, it does make quite a good tester. I mean, I can see how bright that thing is, quite nice and bright, and I can also see how hot it's getting. It doesn't really get warm at all. So, since I've managed to uh, put some data, well, if you can call it data, into the first NeoPixel, I thought I'd uh, see if it will carry on to the second NeoPixel. So I've soldered a second one to the output of the first one. Let's see what we get. Okay, let's switch on, press reset. 
Oh, my pot's in the wrong position. Okay, so both of them light up. Now, can I get different colours? Yes, I had purple there briefly. Yeah, the bottom one's a different colour to the top one. It's a bit hit and miss, this colour control, isn't it? Right, so through sheer perseverance, and it did take a while, I've managed to get a different colour on one LED to the other other LED. That's, uh, oh, wow. So, there it is. It's a quick and dirty NeoPixel addressable RGB LED tester. Cheerio.